Okay, so Lady Ada, we're doing new products. Yes, we're gonna okay. do new products. Okay, I'm gonna have us film it. Wait. Um, okay, first up. Is this in here? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I, didn't, I was confusing the film with the device. Everything's okay. Everything's okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm back. so we got some Hello. filaments. Here are some uh, pictures. Beautiful translucent filaments. Got a couple different colors. These are from um, Ultimaker, and Ultimaker makes like really beautiful and high quality PLA filaments. Whoa. Uh oh. They're coming for us. New York. <laughs> we shouldn't have to connect after all. Oh my god, something's going on outside. All right. Well, we're just. <laughs> all right. They're gone. Okay, we have some exciting. Uh, Great new filaments today. Uh, yes, these are from Ultimaker. They're 1.75 millimeter extruders. So check. Some extruders use three millimeters. Some use 1.75. These are beautiful and translucent. So you can see this like kind of candy glowish red. Um, this kind of royal purple, very beautiful, slightly translucent. And then this kind of it's it's yellowish, but when you print it, it becomes like a clear translucent. Um, so these are some. Uh, desired filaments people have been asking for and we carry them now. Um, these are the least cloggy, smoothest extrudy filaments. Yeah. Um, we did a gigantic filament extrude yeah. test, um, taste test. Yeah, we and can we tell like you these the most. for sure these are the best. So um, you can, uh, I always tell people you try, try different filaments because once you pick the one and you realize that you're going to lose um, Eight to twelve hours. Yeah, like nothing's worse than losing a print yeah. because of a clog or like a, yeah. a jam they're, or something. They're at a good price, and they're also kind of the the best. They're the best. Um, so we carry more of them. Okay, if you have a request for a certain color or um, thickness, like you, oh, you have it in one point seven five, one and three, just email um, support or like put a comment yeah, in we the website. To, we'll we'll try to carry it. We're trying to stock all the ones. Okay, next up. Um, this is springy uh, switch. Yeah, springy switch. So this is the Goldilocks switch. Um, we had the um, hard to trigger and very easy to trigger. So the, the very easy to trigger one, like if you even touch it a little bit, it would trigger. And if you, with the hard one, you have to really kind of flick pretty hard. And then um, in the center of these vibration switches is a spring. You can kind of see it here. We cut this open. There's a spring and then a wire, that, a thick wire that goes in, in the center. And when you move it, the spring vibrates and touches um, the stiff metal in the middle. So the flexible wire that kind of springs and, and touches it. So this is how it detects vibration. And this one is kind of a nice medium. Like this is good for parts where you want to be like, well, I, I shook it or I moved it. Not like I touched it or like it got a, a pretty big hit. So we, we were like, hey, the soft one's too soft, the hard one's too hard. So we now have the Goldilocks medium. Okay. Next up, um, we have a uh, little demo here. Oh, wait. I, I actually have the video um, that we can show. Okay, a little animated GIF. Zip, 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 zip. It's fun. Yeah, we can just watch. I can this. watch this for hours. Yeah, so this is gonna yeah. just go back and forth like this. But Forever. You, but you probably want to show it. But you're probably is. like, what is this? These are um, stepper gauges that are used. So these are stepper motors that are used in car and motorcycle gauges. So it used to be that you know when you like drove a car, or you put your foot on the brake, or the gauge showed the. Um, the level of, of gas or temperature, it was actually a like a, a, an analog gauge. Like it was actually there was like a piece of metal that would change shape with temperature and it would change the gauge. Well, no longer you know, com every uh, car or motorcycle now is completely uh, you know um, computer controlled. There's a computer that actually reads all the measurements and then adjusts the gauge. And so rather than having an analog gauge, then they have actually a stepper motor. And so you can, you know, if you have a car, you're probably familiar with this orange stick that's in, like used as the gauge indicator. And there's actually a stepper motor driver that will drive this back and forth. Um, and it will, you know, usually have a piece of paper that says like, you know, miles per hour or temperature or gas level, and it will be able to move it back and forth. I just have it swinging back and forth, you know, the, for the demo. But of course, you can set it to any position you like. It's a stepper motor; is very precise and it's very fast. So you can move, you can whip this around extremely quickly because um, it's very lightweight and, and designed to be moved very, very fast. So this is kind of good if you want to make an indicator, like a dial indicator, but you don't want to get an analog dial for some reason. You want more precision in it, or you want to be able to control the exact location rather than trying to guess it based on analog. I don't know, it's, yeah. a, it's a trade-off. Um, 
I can see why you'd want to do either one. Maybe you don't have an analog output for some reason or a PWM output. Instead, you want to use a stepper motor control. So I'm just driving it with one of our um, stepper motor drivers, but any stepper motor driver will work just fine. Just acts like a stepper. It's just like 600 steps. Okay. Um, and then we have a bunch of pogo pins. That's why the code is pogo. Pogo party. So do you want to just have me do this where I just show oh, one of each? Let's go to, to the demo and I'll explain what they are. You want to go to the demo. Yeah. So a pogo pin, as you see here, there's a couple rows of them, are little springy clips that have, um, you solder them in or you mechanically connect them to your board and then you, they, they're springy so when you press down on the tip, they, they move up and down, but they still maintain electrical connectivity. So they're really good for designing testers. That's kind of what they're mostly used for, although sometimes they see them in other situations. Um, but in this case, uh, we have a tester, for example. So this board is a, uh, one of our audio effects boards that we're testing here. And when we test, we test every pin to make sure they're all connected and doing the right things for the breakout. And so what you do is you press down on the board, and um, each contact, little pogo pins, pokes up and touches the row of, of breadboard friendly header on either side. Um, the Arduino, it's kind of two actually does the testing where it just checks does this pin do, is it played audio when it's supposed to and all that good stuff, and then you're done. So this is way better than like plugging in something or soldering or a mechanical or trying to hold it on. Um, Pogo pins are designed for this, they're really good for it. Um, we use them in all of our testers as well as some other projects. So, and like get 10 of them and like, these I think are really nice because they're um, they'll fit into perf board. They're the same width as most uh, perf board um, holes. So if you have a board that already has holes for header, you can probably slip these in and just sort of use them instead of header pins. Yeah. So we have already, we had a spear point, which is what you see here. It's very um, like a pointy point. And now we have yeah. another three um, types. This is a cup head. So you can see the head, the, the springy part, has a cup in it. And it, it's concave so that if it's trying to connect to a soldered pin or like if you have a connector that's already attached or something that's pointy, you can't use the spear point because it'll slip off. This cut point will kind of hold the point in, in, the, in connectivity um, while doing the test. So that's this cut point. Okay. We also have a crown point. I don't know actually the name of this. It's kind of like a meat tenderizer looking type thing. And the, and the tip, instead of being cupped or or pointy has kind of these like teeth and it's really good if you have to get like if you're trying to pass a lot of current or you have to get a really good grip on the test point and you have a really big test point um, I think this is what that would be very good for okay and then, and then another type. finally we have a spear point so this one is slimmer like the spear point that we normally have has like a kind of like a triangle head sort of tip. This has a needle head, so there's no bulk to it. So this might be useful in situations where you have to, you don't have a lot of clearance and you don't want the head to bump into something else and you have to touch a point. So I think that this one, uh, it might not be as good for when you have a hole where the spear point would be very good, but this would be good for if you have a circuit board with a, um, a fiducial or test point dot that you wanted to kind of get into and touch the point of it without having it bump into anything else in the area. So I think these are a good range. Okay. Um, and then next up, I'm kind of uh, excited about this. This is a really big panavice. Oh my God, this is so big. Oof. Yeah. Okay, I got it. This is a really big panavice. You're not going to be able to tell from the photo because you don't have a Lady Ada scale. Um, this is the Lady Ada scale. Here's what it's not. In New York City, this isn't the thing they bolt to your um, a hubcap, oh, uh, yeah. your wheel, so you <laughs> no can't pay. drive away because you didn't pay, pay your paying tickets. Actually, it's not that. It's not that. This is for holding boards. Yeah. And so we have why, the Why is this such a big thing? Like, it's a good this? question, but anyone who's ever used a Panavice Junior is like, oh my god, I know exactly why. So if you have a Panavice Junior, which is our popular uh, board holder, first off, there might, be, there might be two things that you're like kind of annoyed by. One, uh, they tip over, right, because they have a small base, and you can bolt it down to a piece of wood, but like, it's still like you have to kind of do a little bit of work. This is like insanely heavy um, and durable. It's got this cast metal base with um, little holders. So you can put your parts in here to keep them. So like, you know, you'd put a couple of capacitors and LEDs and resistors to, to keep them handy while you're working on your project or maybe some tips or wick or whatever. Um, second, it still has the ball head, so it's very adjustable. And then um, another thing that's annoying about the Panavice Junior is that you have to like twist that little knob all the time. So this has a very nice, uh, yeah. quick move and also it has these nice rubbery grips so it really grips your board very very well so wow no i'm just looking at this no it's a cast metal wow. so you can um 
you can quickly turn this in and out to grab boards uh, very strongly and adjust them. So this is kind of, this is actually kind of the, the yeah. classic Panavice. And I, I just usually sell the Panavice Junior because this is extremely large. But if you're doing a lot of board rework, yeah. like this is the bomb. Wow. This is great. This and is, it's very enjoyable to play with. Yeah, like it's, yeah, you can and then move it around. Yeah, this twists around. Yeah. So it's very flexible. This twist this way, and then this twist this way. Yeah, I want my hip to be made out of this one day. This is something. basically <laughs> a replaceable, replaceable hip, okay. but it's for a board holder. So this is the Panavice board. I don't know what the name of it is. The Panavice. Okay. And I kind of think the star of the show, besides you, this week, is two LED strips. So I'm going to show a photo. Is this the animated one. GIF or just the? Well, no. We, oh. Um, I have a video of each one too, though. Oh, okay. Um, Do it. For those Wirecast geeks at home, the latest version of Wirecast just came out. Apparently, animated GIFs are going to work. So right now, these are videos, but maybe next week, animated GIFs will be back. Uh, we, asked, we, we asked a very specific request for them. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Is, I didn't mean to bring, a, bring up a, a, a traumatic experience that you had. Well, I only know a few people who use Wirecast. We're on 602. 603 is out, and I have to wait because I have to make sure all the shows work. So anyways, that is what it okay. looks like when we film them, and this is what it looks like now. Um, so these are uh, a new strip. So you can look at the photo. Of course, this is incredibly bright. Um, these are dot star LEDs. So they're very similar to NeoPixel, but they use two wires, which means they don't require um, the high precision timing. So they, they work with like any processor very easily. It's just like SPI. So these are very portable, portable in the sense that it works on any platform very easily. All you need is two IOs um, to control them. Yeah. And uh, normally we have them in full color. So we have the RGB dot stars. But then we kind of got a hold of these white ones. And it is a little bit weird because you're like, well, why would you want white? Because like, if you have RGB, you can make white with RGB just by having the R, G, and B LEDs on. However, it never quite looks that good, I've noticed. Like, the, you always kind of see a little bit of the bluish tint or like it isn't like a really clear white. So these are true white LEDs. They are like, you know, the... Yeah. Well, they're, they're actually purple with yellow phosphor, but they're the same white that you would see in like um, LED light bulbs or any other uh, LED lighting that's white. So they have a very, very beautiful effect. And it's still three LEDs and you can control, you know, digitally. I just have it doing this sort of pulsy effect. You can control every LED yeah. digitally. This is the high density strip. We'll have the other strips as well. And we have it in this flavor, which is, this is the, I can't even tell. I think this is the cool white. This is cool white. And then, hold the on. The other one is uh, warm. Yeah, hold on. I gotta, yeah. I gotta swap the yeah, wire. So I, I turned Give down me a the, second. I turned down the studio lights. By studio, I mean our lights that we have in our warehouse here. And um, I think it gave you a better idea of what the colors look like. And then this okay. one's the warm one. You can tell yeah, the difference. Yeah, this is definitely. You know, once you see the difference. It's warmer. So this is the warm white, um, which is about uh, 2,500 uh, Kelvin. And the other one is like 6,000 Kelvin. Um, so this one is, is, is a much warmer, much more incandescent like light. And it, yeah. it is a very, like, I'm very picky about my white LEDs. These are very, very beautiful. And yeah. the, the effect is like you have digitally controllable white. And so if you're doing certain kinds of lighting or um, projects where you, you don't need color and you actually just want white light, I would strongly recommend getting these. Um, they look freaking awesome um, because they're extremely bright and uh, digitally controllable, and they don't have the weird ghosting cast effect that RGB LEDs have when you try to make them white. Okay. Also, you don't have to worry about color cast. Like, the color is completely consistent from LED to LED, so it's not like you get any variations. Yeah. When we were in Tokyo, we saw some uh, beautiful architecture that had these, uh, looked like they were dressable white LEDs, and well, I remember us saying, Wow, it would be cool to get something like that. Yeah, I've been like trying to get these, and like when I when they finally yeah. were like, yeah, we made these with in with white phosphor, and I'm like, yes, finally, because yeah. um, white LEDs like they're they look so beautiful and so cool when people do projects with them. Um, they look it's like white is the new RGB or something for LEDs. Yeah. Um, I think that I think it's worth it to have a totally separate product just to have the warm or cool white LEDs are digital controllable. Anyways, okay. I think we'll be seeing some cool projects with them. All right, so that was new products. Thank you, Lady Ada. Good work.